You may remember that my most viewed video to date was the Transformers tier list ranking me and my friends did, purely based on Transformers names. After some feedback, it was made crystal clear to me that me and my friends know pretty much absolutely nothing about Transformers G1 continuity. So, in an effort to educate myself and enjoy some nostalgia, I'll be looking back at some of the most important episodes in the G1 continuity and talking about them in a series of videos. I might even think about tier list ranking the episodes as well. Uh, we'll see how we do. Let's get into it. Season 1 of the Transformers begins with the three-part opener, More Than Meets the Eye, in which the premise, main characters, and their relationships are all established in a pretty concise way. The opening voiceover and panning shots of Cybertron tell a very simple story of two rival factions, one good and one evil, fighting for control of the planet and its energy. And just on a separate note, I love the opening theme, no explanation is needed there. After the opening voiceover, we're introduced to a couple of the more easily identifiable Autobots, Wheeljack and Bumblebee, who are transporting Edajon conductors to Iacon, the Autobot city. They run into some Seekers, led by a Decepticon that looks but doesn't quite sound like Starscream and are chased underground. Autobots, stop them! During this, Bumblebee gets injured in vehicle form and takes shelter in a transformed Wheeljack. I can't exactly explain why this is funny, but it just is. Like, I'm really trying to think about why it made me laugh and I just don't know. Anyway... We're then introduced to the show's best boy Soundwave and his spy Laserbeak who was spying on the Autobots and the launch status of the Ark. I said spy twice there, doesn't matter. We get some shots of Optimus Prime and hear that smooth, commanding, buttery voice. Unless a new supply of energy is found, nobody is going to win this war. And then we cut to Soundwave reporting back to Megatron. Here we get the now correctly standing Starscream being his backstabbing best, pretty much openly threatening Megatron's position as leader. The Autobots would have lost eons ago if I'd been calling the shots. We also get the establishment of Shockwave's loyalty when he's commanded by Megatron to take charge of Cybertron in his absence. I wonder if he would have been so quick to take on that job if he knew how long you would need to do it for, honestly. Moving on, the Autobots launch the Ark, Decepticons follow, two meteors crash into each other, and the Decepticons dock the Ark and everyone has a big fight. Optimus screams attack like he's in the Bayverse and Soundwave takes on practically everyone in a pretty well choreographed fight scene. Then something about G-forces and the Ark crashes into a volcano on Earth. Four million years later and the volcano's eruption reactivates the ship's computer which sends out a probe, scans a fighter jet, repairs one of the Decepticon seekers and brings him back to life. This Decepticon wakes up, repairs Megatron and then all the other Decepticons who then fly away leaving the Autobots for dead. So just to address a question I had when I was watching this, why would the Ark's computer bring back to life even a single Decepticon? Isn't this like some kind of unlimited revival machine capable of bringing back anything to life which is like Cybertronian? Lots of questions uh, and I'm hoping when I look in the comments of this video I'll get some answers. Uh, and while you're there please like and subscribe. After leaving the Ark the Decepticons all ruminate on the fate of Cybertron, realizing they're on a planet full of natural resources, they fly off with plans of universal domination. So, another question, can all Transformers fly in their non-transformed state? Like, they don't all turn into planes or whatever, they just fly off like Superman. Starscream shows how incompetent he is by taking some fun shots at the Ark and inadvertently causes enough of a tremor to knock Optimus back into the path of the Fix Everything Ray, which brings him back to life. And, uh, oh hey, where did this trailer just go? He says, Thanks. and revives the rest of the Autobots. Megatron then outlines his plan to build a new space cruiser to get back to Cybertron and sends off Starscream, Soundwave, and Rumble to look for materials. Starscream then threatens Megatron again behind his back to Rumble who basically calls him out for it whilst using his cool pile driver arms to cause an earthquake. Meanwhile, Optimus figures out that the Decepticons will look to harvest the planet of its natural energy sources and sends out Hound and Cliff Jumper to go and scout the area. Cliff Jumper pulls out a huge gun, says he has Megatron right in his viewfinder and misses his shot. Laserbeak goes to investigate, messes up Hound who takes a tumble off a cliff and Ratchet and co rescue him. After hearing about Megatron's plan to harvest Edajon then ditch Earth, Optimus gets an attack force together consisting of Jazz, Prowl, Cliff Jumper, Trailbreaker, Wheeljack, Ironhide, Mirage, Sunstreaker and Sideswipe. I wasn't sure about stun Sunstreaker. Sunstreaker? Yeah, Sunstreak, I wasn't sure. Optimus' trailer appears again, they all roll out. At an oil refinery, Spike and Sparkplug Wiki, wick don't ask, are introduced whilst the Decepticons fill up Energon cubes with oil and squeeze them into Energon. The Autobots fly in and we see Megatron's transformed state is a gun! wielded by his least trustworthy subordinate Starscream. A battle takes place and Megatron destroys the refinery, leaving the Autobots and human workers at sea before the end credits roll. The Transformers will return after these messages. Part 2 picks up with the Autobots putting out the fire and rescuing each other and the humans. There's a cool little scene where Jazz turns his arm into a hook and uses it to pull Optimus to safety. I'm not really sure why he just doesn't fly away and forget about it, but listen, it doesn't matter. I'm sure this will never come up again. Spike, our human exposition, picks up a shrunken down sound wave disguised as a cassette player and just leaves him in the arc. Some exposition is given about why and how the Transformers, well, 
transform. Barrage goes invisible, and Hound takes Spike for the ride of his life. I'm gonna take you for the ride of your life. Soundwave, meanwhile, downloads all knowledge of Earth and its energy supplies through Teletran 1 until Spike discovers him and pulls the alarm. Ravage gets captured, and the Decepticons come up with a pretty flawed plan to cause a tsunami near a hydroelectric dam to increase the energy production. Now, I'm no scientist, but Rumble gets his pile drivers out again for the lads and causes a tidal wave, and Megatron goes to collect his energy on. Autobots sense Megatron's machinations and roll out. Hound fights Rumble underwater and loses, whilst Bumblebee and Ironhide do some landscaping, successfully diverting the tsunami. Optimus and the others then just fucking shoot Starscream and this little Starscream in the face, but don't actually kill them. Then there's this funny scene where Optimus is hanging off a ledge, again forgetting that he can fly. Starscream self-sabotages himself again, but this time shoots a control panel with a slingshot? Optimus bonks Megatron on the head with an energy axe. Meanwhile, Rumble beats Hound, and Spike starts a fight he can't finish. Megatron knocks Optimus into the dam and helicopters away. Optimus forgets he can fly again and Jazz busts out the cool cable arm. Spike goes to save Hound and almost drowns. We then have a short montage of all the Decepticons gathering Energon as Megatron and Soundwave make plans to steal and convert the ruby crystals of Burma, the richest source of energy on the face of the earth. They're the richest source of energy on the face of the earth. Starscream continues to make a nuisance of himself by firing a cannon powered by Energon just because he hasn't done anything to piss Megatron off in a while. Unknown to the Decepticons, Spike and Sparkplug are nearby and have relayed all the information back to Optimus. Starscream threatens Megatron again and they all head off to Burma. Wheeljet comes up with a plan to bury the Decepticons in the mine by using explosives planted by Sparkplug, who's worked in the mines before. Seriously, who is this guy? And Bumblebee, who's the smallest Autobot and has the best chance of being undetected. Just ignore the fact he's bright fucking yellow. Wheeljet gives the pair a very generous 60 second timer on the explosives and the two head off. Sparkplug and Bumblebee set the bomb, confront Skywarp and Thundercracker, Sparkplug gets sparked out, and 60 seconds is definitely gone by now, right? Anyway, Optimus shits out a drone from his trailer. Oh look, it's back again. Where does he keep it? But yeah, the bomb goes off, sending Optimus rolling down a cliff as the end credits roll. The Transformers will return after these messages. Episode 3 picks up with an injured Optimus struggling to transform. Hey, we get it, man. We've all been there. Well... Not me, but never mind. The Autobots rescue B and old spark plug, but unfortunately the Decepticons survive and escape with all the energon they can carry. Ironhide and Blue Streak set off on their own to fight all the Decepticons. Skywalk teleports behind them and shoots Ironhide out of the sky. That's what you get, I guess. Blue Streak then forgets he can fly and Jazz whips out the old grapple hook hand for I think the third time? Yeah, it'd be great if they remember they could fly when they really need to, but forget about it. It's not important. Stop focusing on it. Ironhide is paralyzed and Optimus gives a pretty cool line about being a hero. Just remember, there's a thin line between being a hero and being a memory. After this, Hound and Mirage come up with a plot to trick Megatron with some kind of giant illusion of a rocket fuel depot. They talk loudly about it in front of Ravage before facilitating his escape. How devious. Starscream openly tries to assassinate Megatron in front of Best Boy Soundwave. Starscream gets maimed and Megatron decides that's the extent of his punishment. Is Megatron a bad leader with no follow through? Anyway, the Decepticons attack the hologram depot and the Autobots in disguise. And by disguise, I mean they're all just wearing lab coats for some reason. But it turns out the Decepticons knew this was a trick because instead of actually attacking themselves, they attack with scrap versions of the cells and they all just fall apart. Megatron with prep time is pretty formidable it seems. Megatron gives a speech about winning and flies off again to pick up rocket fuel for real this time. They attack an army base in a scene that now reminds me of the opening of Michael Bay's Transformers and prepare to return to Cybertron. Optimus and the Autobots all gear up for their final battle. Get it? Gear up. In what is surely a doomed mission to stop the Decepticons fleeing Earth back to Cybertron with all their gathered energon. Megatron turns into a gun again and everyone has a big fight. Megatron gets the better of Optimus and the Decepticons manage to escape in their newly built space cruiser. This must have seriously irked Optimus because he gives out a nice loud Megatron! Optimus takes off using Sideswipe's rocket pack because now he needs something to help him fly, but it's quickly shot down and falls back to Earth. Aboard the space cruiser, Starscream takes aim at Megatron again, but is interrupted by Mirage, who sabotages the ship and sends it free-falling into the ocean. Mirage barely escapes with his life and single-handedly manages to save the day and perhaps the entire universe. The Autobots all cheer and laugh at the demise of the Decepticons before transforming and rolling out back to the Ark. After some exposition from Spike, it's revealed that the governments of the world have given the Autobots all the energy they need to bring Cybertron back to life, which is just really uncharacteristic of governments in real life. It's really kind of funny. But unknown to our heroes, Megatron has survived because no one bothered to check if anyone was actually dead. But hey-ho, who cares? Give me more Transformers. The Transformers will return after these messages. So this is me without a script now, because uh, I thought I'd just talk about Transformers just like, you know, off the dome. I really, really like it. 
I always have. I've never been like a super serious fan. I've dabbled. I've come in and out of Transformers at various points in my life. But I'm really enjoying going back and watching some of the original stuff. I can't give much of a deep analysis. I'm, not, I'm just not that kind of guy, unfortunately. All I can say is I really enjoy it. I love the animation style. I can't wait to watch more. And I'm probably going to get all my friends to watch the Transformers movie with me. And then we'll maybe, I don't know, can't live stream it. But, you know, we'll do a reaction and I'll record their reactions to it. That sounds like fun. Uh, well, if you enjoy the content, then please do make sure you like and subscribe. All that good stuff. And yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.